Hey guys, Kakarot197 again. This time with a review of the Marvel 44 scale high-grade Gundam Elo booster from the G-Unit manga series. And man, for a model from the Gundam Wing series, especially the Marvel 44 scale series, this is actually looking pretty damn good. Yes, despite the relatively big sticker sheet, you will have to do some painting by yourself to make this thing completely color accurate, but there are way worse offenders out there in the Gundam Wing line. So for stickers, we're getting the usual eye stickers, a metallic red chin sticker, crest sticker, and crotch sticker. For the chest, we get two gold stickers for the vents. Then we get the more color accurate burgundy ones for the knees, the wings on the legs, and the wingtips of the cannons. And finally, all the white you see on the backpack are stickers. Which technically means that in order for this thing to be completely color accurate, you would only have to paint the top of the feet and parts of the shoulders white, in addition to some detailing on the cannons, the beam rifle, and the shield. Still, if you're going to be painting regardless, I would recommend painting everything. But most importantly, the proportions seem to be spot on, which was definitely not the case for all contemporary model kits. And while it does have some hidden seam lines, you will still have to take care of most of them. And in addition to this relatively big normal sticker sheet, we also get clear markings. There's some for the LO booster, there's a personal insignia, and then we also get some random warning stickers. Up next, let's have a look at the transformation of this thing. It is nothing short of amazing. And it's already done. I am... speechless. The official designation is the high speed flying mode, by the way. And with that out of the way, let's have a look at some of the accessories. First up, we have the lightweight accelerate submachine gun, which is quite a mouthful for a very simple weapon. It's two halves slapped together, single color as with most weapons of the time and for quite a time to come. Of course, with the polycap hands, it fits into them perfectly. Then for defensive purposes, we get the reactive shield. Then when we turn it around, we have a handle that can rotate and we also get two bean sabers. These are dummies, but they can be removed and replaced with a pair of clear pink beam chopsticks. Yes, there are beam chopsticks, but this is the 90s, so just having clear plastic in a War 44 scale kit is a big win in my book. Also, again, because of the polycap hands, they fit into them perfectly, just as the shield does. Up next is the main event of this thing, the two thrust beam cannons. They are nicely articulated, will rotate around, then this thing folds open, and there you go. Ready to fire at whatever this thing encounters. And not only are they nicely articulated, they're also nicely detailed. And with this thing being a remold, we of course also get a leftover part. The backpack of the Geminas. And if you want to, you can actually use it, and then also remove those big bulky shoulders for a more lean look. And with everything back on it, let's have a look at the articulation of this thing. As with all 90s model kits, the head is on a single ball joint. We'll go a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit side to side. Just be careful that you don't knock off any of those small pieces mounted to the side. Then the arms will rotate around all the way. They will also rotate around above the elbow and bend at the elbow at one joint for 90 degrees. The hands are on ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around and do everything a ball joint does. The waist will rotate around as well. Then when we turn him around, we get these giant thruster things, which can be opened up. There we go. The front skirts are molded together and cannot be separated unless you choose to modify them. The legs go forward about that far. Backwards, not really anything at all because of that back skirt that's in the way. We'll go out about that far, we'll rotate around a little bit on that ball joint, bend at the knee on two joints, not that bad for a wing model kit. Then the feet are on a single ball joint, forwards a bit, backwards a bit, side to side a little bit, and then we'll also rotate around a little bit. Also those ankle guards do not move as they are molded together with the legs. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And well, for 800 yen, if you're a fan of G-Unit or the LO Booster in particular, and you don't mind painting a little bit here and there, 
I would say go for it. The Elo Booster was definitely a solid unit for the time and will still look good today if you're willing to do the painting. And seeing as how slow Bandai is with putting out model kits for the main Gundam wing line, I don't think this guy will get a modern high grade anytime soon. Or so I thought when I recorded this video like two months ago. In the meantime, it has been announced that we are getting a P Bandai for the Geminis Unit 1, which means that maybe we'll get an LO booster relatively soon? Then for some size comparisons, first of all here is next to the Geminis Unit 1 and the Hydra Gundam. Another pretty bulky machine from G Unit. Then here is next to some modern Gundam Wing units, the Sandrock Gundam and the Wing Gundam. It would be amazing to have this thing in the same quality as those model kits, but like I said before, I don't think it's going to be happening anytime soon. Or will it? And finally, here is next to the standard size Jim Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And you know, for a small Gundam Wing unit, this guy manages to be pretty damn bulky. And that's all for this review. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you all next time.